In this section, we will learn the data submission related operations. In HiCode, our MySQL database has four actions, submit and submit custom data, submit multiple data, and batch import data. Here we focus on the first three submission methods. First, let's open the editor. In the use of the form container we learned before, we have made such a form container. If you haven't finished making such a UI, you can first switch to the content of our previous section to see how our form container is made. Our definition of database-related operations and our services are based on such a case to continue a production. Then we will make a demonstration for you through such a case. First of all, we can take a look at such an application. When I click the Submit button, I need to submit our name, age and corresponding self-introduction to the database. We can take a brief look at such an application. When the user clicks the Submit button, he needs to submit the name, age and self-introduction filled by the user submission of data. When it comes to data storage, we know that we need a backend to intervene, so we can first add a corresponding database when backend is selected. Here we choose a default private database and let us double-click it to rename it, which is called the Enrollment Information Table. Then we can see which fields he needs. From the submission of our front end, it contains our name, age and corresponding self-introduction, so we choose our database to add a series of fields for it, namely, our name and our age and age. We can change it into an entire number segment and a self-introduction, so we complete the creation of a database and then then we will design a data submission service. Similarly, if we select backend, we can see that there is a button for such a service in our logic toolbar on the right side. It is the same as the service in our widget bar when we click on the left side. On the right side is our shortcut entry. You can add it directly on the right side. So when we click here, we will define such a service. We first select such a service, and we can see that when we select a service, it contains a receive parameter, return parameter, and service start is a definition of such an action. Through the study of the last lesson, we know that when we design a service, we must first understand what such a service is going to do. In this lesson, what we want to make is a data submission process, so we double-click to rename such a service, which is called our data submission. Since data submission is involved, there are many submission methods. Here, I will first demonstrate the most simple method of our common data submission. Since we need to submit the three parameters of front-end name and age self-introduction to the back-end, we will write the corresponding three parameters here, which are our name. He clicks the plus sign here and then adds a receiving parameter for him, for example our age is the same. We can click a plus sign here. For example, our self-introduction can see that when I set such a series of receiving parameters, its type, required items, and a debugging value are included later. Let's make another introduction later. First of all, we can see its type, ah, uh, its type, including our numbers, strings and Boolean objects. We can make a simple selection here. If it does not meet the corresponding type, its data cannot be submitted. For example, our name is a type of a string, our age is a number, and our self-introduction is also a type of a string. Then we can choose whether it is required, for example, in such a string in the application case, our name and age are required items. So here we check the two required items of name and age, and then we define the return parameters. So the return parameters are the information returned from the back end to the front end after we complete such a series of operations. Generally speaking, if we want to involve a number according to the submission of, such a parameter is very necessary. It is also a series of parameters that we often use in the service. There are submission results, that is, whether he can complete a submission, a failure reason for his submission failure, and a submission data that may be submitted. These are a series of parameters designed by us, equivalent to that is, we use a return parameter to tell the front-end whether such a data has been submitted to our database normally. Then, after we write one of our receive parameters and return parameters, we can define a service. In fact, the definition of service is very similar to the action before we go to learn. When data is submitted to such a service, who will do what when it starts? Since we are a series of operations in the back-end, what we are going to demonstrate here is a process of data submission. 
since we want to submit data, we must operate our database. Therefore, the object we choose here is a database such as our enrollment information table. Then, we choose this action in the drop-down menu it contains options for submitting user-defined data, submitting multiple pieces of data, and batch importing data. Therefore, you should understand that when we click Submit, all the fields created by users will be automatically parsed here for us. After understanding this, we will delete a test field here. Fat man, refresh here, so that we can choose our name, age and self-introduction here. So the question is, where does the name I want to submit come from? Is it such a name received from the front end through our service? Where is such a name? Note that this is actually a very good point of our association parameters. It is precisely because of the parameters I received here that I can get the parameters here. Generally speaking, where do I get the parameter values in this case? Through the drop-down menu, right? So, similarly, here we click on the drop-down menu to see, ah, before the black dot information on our side, the division of the existing name, age and self-introduction here. What do these three represent respectively? These three actually represent a series of receiving parameters. For example, if we add another receiving parameter here, we can see the name, age and self-introduction in the drop-down menu, and a parameter 4, which represents how many parameters are in front of such a dividing line. We can make a series here click on the column. So the definition of such a service is that when he submits, his name is equal to the content of our name, his age is equal to the content of the age we took from the front desk, his self-introduction is equal to the content of the self-introduction we took from the front desk, and then such a parameter 4 can be used after we understand a usage delete the data. Similarly, if he completes a submission of data, what should he do? Whether he wants to return a result submitted by it to the front end, through our return parameters, and since the database submission is an asynchronous operation, we don't know when it is completed. For such a series of operations, what do we use? We use our callback, right? So we select such a submit button and click a callback here. So when he performs a submit operation on the registration information table, what will he do after submitting? We can select a current service from the drop-down menu. In the current service, there will be a setting to return the result by default. Of course, in addition, there are multiple options for setting the return cookie, setting the return result and terminating the service, and setting the custom return result. Here, we only learn the usage of setting the return result in the elementary course, and we can notice that the setting return result includes the reason for the failure of submitting the result and the submission data. Where do these three parameters come from? Yes, because I have added three such feedback parameters here, it will help us to analyze them automatically. So what is the submission result that we want to return to the front end? That is, we can see the submission result in the drop-down menu. This is not called whether it is successful or not. So we need to tell you whether it is successful or not. Pound, we also need to tell the front end the reason for the failure of submitting the results. If we fail, we need to submit the results. Trump can also have an object variable for submitting the results. If we complete the submission of a data, we will return such a data to the front end. In this way, we have completed a basic one called submit definition of service. When we finish defining a service, we can perform a simple debugging. For example, in the name here, we can enter the age of Li Si. We give him a 12-year-old and then introduce ourselves as Li Si. In this way, we enter a series of initial values and then when we click the debug button in the upper left corner, we can see that the submission result proves that he has indeed submitted and then there is no reason for the failure. The whole piece of data we submitted here is also fed back to the front end through such a submission data. This is that we have completed a common definition. Then we switch to our database and we can find that the just li4, age 12 and self-introduction have been submitted to the database. Of course, the current submission is only made by an our side, we click debugging to submit a debugging. If we need to call such a service, how can we call it? Similarly, we choose such a submit button for a front end, because generally speaking, our interaction is when the user completes a series of content input, click the submit button here to submit the data to the back end, so we add an event for such a submit tone. When it is clicked, 
what should we do? It is to call such a service to submit data, so here we will directly choose an operation to submit data for the backend. Then when he starts the service, he has three parameters, name, age and self-introduction. In fact, these three parameters are also passed to the frontend through a receiving parameter on our side. So here we have a series of click selections. What is the last name he wants to submit? Is it the content of a name in the input box on our side here? We will select the content of the name in the input box here. Similarly, his age is also equal to the age in the input box on our side, and his self-introduction is also equal to the self-introduction in the input box on our side that tell us that oh, the parameter type is wrong, age, oh, a parameter proving our age is wrong. Why is it wrong? Let's have a look. We can switch to Hegel to see what we are here. It's a red font. What's a red font? The red font is our string type, and we set it here in backend. What is the parameter type that can be written here? It's a number. Therefore, there is an error in proving a type of such an input box. How can we modify it? You can also see that an input type here is text by default. We can drop it down to modify it into an integer, so that the age we enter is a numeric type. Then we preview to see the name, again, the name we write again, to Zhao 6. Then, aged 18, I introduce myself as Zhao Liu. Similarly, we click on a submit here, and you can see that there is one here that proves that the submission has been successful. Therefore, ah, it is also a very easy skill for us to debug through the network. Every time we start the data service, we can see that there is an option of wrong plus an ID. When we click it, we can see that there are a series of parameters in its black bag, and the following series of parameters are a series of receiving parameters defined by us and some of our own parameters for database operation. We you can make a view here. Similarly, our return parameters can also be used to view a series of contents in our return, which is also a basis for us to carry out a backend debugging. In the same way, we can switch to our database. We can see that the value of Zhao 6 I just written has also been written in. Through a series of operations just now, we can find that if the submission of our backend fails, we should give a series of prompts to the frontend, so we should do more for a series of operations on the frontend side refine and refine a little, which is why we want to return one of his submission results, whether it failed and why it failed. So here, we complement the logic of the front end. Here we add a condition, and the submission result of the result returned by the front end is equal to that in other words, it completes a normal submission. If the submission is completed, we will let the system interface display the successful submission. Similarly, if he fails to complete a submission, what shall we do under other conditions? Let's ask the system interface to give a prompt. The prompt content is a failure reason for a return result in a drop-down menu. Similarly, if it completes a submission, we can do more things in this branch, such as emptying its input box. Okay, here we can copy and paste several copies, including one of our ages, including one of our self-books and self-introduction, empties it completely. This is a complete logic. So here, I will take you to read it again. Let's write the logic of the front end. After we design a service, we can debug such a service to complete it commissioning. Then, when we click the submit button, we trigger the service, which will naturally load our receiving parameters, and we can select the corresponding values of the parameters one by one. Then when he finishes such an operation, we should make a different response according to a result submitted by the backend. For example, if the submission is successful, we will display a prompt that the submission is successful and clear the values of a series of input boxes. If he fails to submit successfully, we should tell our users why he failed. This is a complete service definition. So here we have a preview. Here we have another one. He can also write about his age at will. We can also write about his self-introduction here. Then we can click submit to see that he told us that the submission was successful and cleared a series of values. In this way, we can complete a complete service definition a simple submission operation, to tell you, generally speaking, 
Our front and back platforms are completely separated, that is, when we do the service, we completely complete the logic of the service and ensure that such a service is completely correct through debugging. Then we will do the logic of the front-end end, and the logic of the front-end end will make different responses according to the different submission results of our back-end end. So this is the so-called we must not default every service, it is normal, we must default every service, the submission of its data is likely to be wrong, and then according to its different branches to let the, the front end makes different responses. Such a good habit can ensure the readability of your application, and the user experience will be very good. Then this is our most basic operation called our submission. Then we will talk about our next service, which is our operation of submitting custom data. Similarly, we will define our service first. Double-clicking is called submitting, and then the custom data is also printed. Although we call submitting custom data differently, the effect we want to achieve is the same, that is, we will carry out a series of values of front-end we only need to submit the submitted data to the back-end, which is called our submitted data, but we still need to tell us the same reverse return parameters. A front-end is called a submission result, tell him the reason for the failure, and the submitted data. These are the three parameters of the old deep Tibet station. Generally speaking, ah, we will add these three parameters. Then let's define how to submit custom data. It's also very simple. Let's select our enrollment data table and let him perform an operation of submitting custom data. Therefore, we actually need to submit such a level, that is, our objects, to such a submitted data. So here, we directly select a submitted data received by our frontend for a while after we get down the menu. Then, similarly, we can make a judgment in the callback. The current service area is set to return the result. The submission result is whether the submission result is successful, and the failure reason is a failure reason for the submission result. Similarly, the submitted data is the value of an object variable equal to the result of our submission so we have completed a basic service definition. Of course, if I want to debug here, what I want to write here is a complete object. Of course, the object is difficult to write, so here we directly use our form container to let them conduct induction and sorting directly. Do you remember what the results were when we submitted the form container? Here, I'll help you review. Let's change the name of this one, which is called our submit custom data. Okay. Then we set the action of such a button. When it is clicked, what do we do? We call one of our form containers to let it do. Let it do an operation to get form data. Then when it is finished, we will carry out a debugging record through our application system. Let's take a look at what is the form data that it obtains to return the results. The prompt here is called form data. In the same way, we click a preview to have a look. We switch to control here, then input the name, then the age, and then introduce ourselves. We randomly input it. Then, we can take a look here and submit the customized data. When we click, we can see a drop-down menu appears the name is Aston, the age is 23, and the self-introduction is called such a series of values, because you can think about why we can directly obtain such a form data. Is this because we have bound it one by one through our form container? We can see that for us, please enter an input box such as self-introduction, a field name we bind is called our self-introduction, so now the form data he obtains is called a self-introduction, and the content in the self-introduction is the content we count in the number box. It is the same with age. We also bind its field name as age, and then he wants to bind a content in one of his input boxes, then a series of binding is performed, so here, ah, we get the name, age and the corresponding self-introduction. Therefore, ah, after we get such a series of form data, for example, an object variable, we can make our submission self-defined data, and directly submit such a series of values we obtained in one breath. Come to me let's take a look at the actual effect. Similarly, click a plus sign here, because we need to get the form data and then get the corresponding form data after getting it, and then submit it. So we need to submit such data after the completion of the callback below. So here, we directly call the action of submitting custom data, to submit the data of is a form data of the results we return. Then, when it is completed, we can copy the series we just made here, and the fat man pastes it here. 
When he is finished, he still displays a different series of contents according to its submission results. The only difference is that we pass one this is an action called submit custom data. We can submit all the data in the form in batches, instead of clicking one by one here. As you learn more, I hope you can use the form container as a submission method, because it is more convenient to use preview to see an effect. We also input the name of the scheme. Then, if we are 19 years old, we can introduce ourselves. Then, we click an operation to submit custom data. When we click it, we can see that it has also been submitted successfully. However, how does it have been submitted successfully? We can go to the network let's take a look at the data we submitted. What did we transfer? We directly transferred an object in the past here. Therefore, due to a series of field values here, we can see the field values corresponding to our name, age and self-introduction, that is, we submit the past name, age and self-introduction here, that is, we use the form the obtained name, age and self-introduction, so in the case of one-to-one -one correspondence, it will automatically help us submit, so it is also very easy to understand, that is, if the corresponding value is modified, it will not be submitted. Let's take an example here. For example, the self-introduction here is called an introduction. You can see that a natural name here is changed to an introduction. Then let's take a look in Yunnan. Generally, we input one of his name, one of his ages, and one of his self-introductions, and you can see our first name first click a submit user to find data, you can see that the form data here is called introduction, which is our value, and then the name is such a value, and the age is such a value. Let's switch to our registration information form, and we switch to our registration information form. We can see the introduction of age and name. You see, the name is wait a minute, and age 12 is submitted yes, but the self-introduction was not submitted. Why? Because here we get such a field called introduction, rather than self-introduction, so when we use such a submit custom data, we must ensure that we set such a form container, and its field name is exactly consistent with the name of our backend.